Hey everyone, welcome back to Upside Down Data. Today I want to talk about Bitcoin and whether or not it's showing relative strength versus stocks or whether it's about to fall off a cliff with them. If you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter. A lot of updates, better indicators and more over there. So what I want to talk about was kind of the interesting price action that happened today and what we might make of it, especially in the broader context. So today, Bitcoin behaved quite interestingly. You can see with this candle here, Bitcoin had dropped all the way down to about 18.5K, but then it ended up the reverting, kind of bouncing all the way back up and ending up closing the day up above 19K. And the reason why this was notable was that this is in a backdrop where the stock market was seemingly falling off a cliff. You can see the Dow Jones closed below the June lows, actually setting in a new low and certainly the wick being way lower there. We did have a bounce towards the end of the day rallying back up but ending in uh, a new low for the year. The NASDAQ also didn't perform well. Now the NASDAQ did not set a new low, nor did the S&P 500. They both were able to at least close above those lows. Now the S&P 500 did wick down to almost the same levels that it did back in June, but more or less found support in that level and had a bounce back to close a little bit higher. But certainly, you know, the stocks closed in the deep red today the stocks were falling off of a cliff but yet bitcoin didn't you know bitcoin actually was able to show some relative strength so the question is does this mean anything and what should we interpret from this and, and there's kind of two narratives that have quickly sprung up in kind of you know the cryptosphere crypto twitter you know there's one camp kind of the more extreme camp that says up oh, this is evidence of decoupling right this means that suddenly crypto now is not going to be correlated with stocks anymore and that it can rally while the stock market tanks kind of an extreme statement on that side. And then of course the extreme statements on the other is that, you know, there's absolutely nothing to be learned from this and that, you know, Bitcoin is just gonna collapse, you know, over the weekend and, you know, we're doomed, you know, the correlation with, with stocks are gonna be as strong as they ever have been. So, you know, which side might have more merit? That's what I wanna talk about today. You know, should we see this as a decoupling event or should we just think that there's no, nothing really to be seen here? This is kind of a spurious outcome and that there's really nothing to be gleaned. So let's go ahead and talk about this a bit more. So the one thing I did just want to mention, so this would be kind of more on the side of the bullish side, not so much decoupling, but just a, a one possibility I think is useful to keep an eye on. So one thing that Bitcoin has done in the past that I think is useful to, to watch is that it sometimes has actually acted as a leading indicator of stocks of, in this case, what I'm showing you here, the S&P 500. So the orange line here, S&P 500. And of course the, the chart in the background here is Bitcoin. And so this is the 2018 bear market when we had this big capitulation down to the lows in 2018. And you notice that when Bitcoin did that, it actually did that pretty far in advance of the stock market, right? You know, the stock market kind of chopped sideways through there and didn't end up putting in its low until quite a bit after this big capitulation formed for Bitcoin. You know, if we kind of look at the beginning of this capitulation for Bitcoin, to the beginning of that capitulation for the stock market, you know, it was almost a month ahead of time before it started doing that. And then also, likewise, you know, we ended up bottoming, you know, Bitcoin, it bottomed sooner and started to move back to the upside sooner than stocks. Now, Bitcoin didn't really act, recover as fast as the stock market did coming out of this, but it did have its bounce and set its bottom in before stocks did. And then also on the other way, a similar thing happened where if we go and look at, you know, November of 21, when Bitcoin set its all time high, it then went into its bear market in advance of the stock market, about um, a month, a little over a month in advance of the stock market, about a month and a half. And then, you know, the stock market had its peak, its all-time high in um, January of 2022, you know, January this year, and then bear market city, you know, ever since. And so the question then would be that where we're looking at where we are right now, is this possibly the beginning of one of those leading signs that Bitcoin has been known to do in the past, where it will form some kind of bottom and then start showing strength before the stock market actually puts in its bottom. So that would be, you know, not a full decoupling argument if that played out, you know, it wouldn't mean that stocks and crypto will have no correlation anymore. What it could mean is that, you know, maybe this is the beginning of something like we saw back in, you know, November of, uh, or excuse me, back in the bottom of the bear market in uh, 2018, December of 2018. And so what that would mean is that, you know, maybe this was the low for crypto. This is not the low for stocks. It would mean that maybe stocks could go in and put in a lower low from current levels, but yeah, crypto, uh, Bitcoin wouldn't actually necessarily need to follow and it could start rallying. Now, 
I put out a video um, the other day where I was basically saying I thought if the stock market put in new lows or especially decisive new lows, Bitcoin probably would as well. And that still remains my base case. So I wanted to call attention to this leading indicator behavior that Bitcoin has done because I think it's something to keep an eye on and it's certainly a possibility. So, you know, for the people who are arguing for decoupling, this is about as far as I would be willing to go in that direction. I don't think that crypto is decoupling from stocks. But I think that if we are talking about a bear scenario, that would be the bear, or excuse me, a bullish scenario, that would be that Bitcoin is actually acting as a leading indicator again and, and finding its bottom before its stocks do. But the reason why I'm still, well, there are multiple reasons why that's not my base case. And I want to go through them a little bit further. So, you know, obviously this is one possibility, but there's more going on in the market that we have to keep an eye on. And then there's also some things that our models are telling, are telling us, at least what I'm looking at, that still suggests that caution is more, might be the more prudent outlook on the market. So the first thing to keep an eye on is just some other things that have been going on. So the bond market, I call this out in a, a recent video as well, has just been going absolutely ripping to the upside. You know, bonds are getting sold off at, you know, a pretty um, prestigious pace. So this is the two year, um, yield. So, uh, you know, as yield goes up, that means that people are selling two year uh, treasury bonds. This is the US five year and this is the 10 year. And you just see this just steady rally going up with especially the shorter duration um, bonds here, the two year just really going parabolic or recently. And so, in and then in conjunction with that, the dollar has been really strengthening. And so, people have been selling bonds and likely, you know, kind of selling out of bonds and looking for relative security in cash. And the dollar has just been going nuts. And one of the reasons why the dollar has been going nuts is that, you know, the DXY, which is the, what everyone looks at, look at the strength of the dollar, you know, it's weighted against a bunch of other currencies. And the reason why the dollar has been going so crazy is that most of the currencies that it's most heavily weighted against in this index are the euro, which has been falling off of a cliff and had a horrible day today. The, um, the yen, which didn't have as bad of a day today, but has been doing terribly against the US dollar. And then also interestingly, the, the British pound had a horrendous day today. You know, it's unbelievably massive move for a currency in a single day, you know, 3.5% of the downside. This is off of news from the government in uh, Britain where they just announced plans to, um, or, or proposal to basically cut taxes and borrow a bunch of money. And then obviously in a very inflationary backdrop, that kind of action when you know the pound's already setting massive inflation numbers did not sit well with a lot of market participants and we got this massive sell-off of um of the pound and so all of this suggests a very uh tenuous point in the market where stocks are looking looking poised to set new lows if not already have set new lows like what we just saw with you know um the dow jones and then also just all this turmoil that we're seeing in the broader uh, other markets where we're seeing the bond market continue to get absolutely destroyed, especially as the Fed continues to tighten monetary policy. And then the currency market is just showing, you know, bloodbath basically, that, you know, basically anything that's not the dollar is getting wrecked and people are fleeing to the dollar for refuge. And that just means there aren't enough dollars around to go around. And one of the things that people have been talking about as a possibility from here is that if the demand for the dollar keeps going up, one way that people can get it is by selling their U.S. Um, Treasury notes, basically their, their their bonds, which would then cause you know yields to continue going up, which then might cause more people then to flee into the dollar as they sell out, and it could create this kind of uh, reinforcement. And so that would be a pretty major occurrence, and especially as we know. The dollar, you know, DXY and crypto tend to be inversely correlated. So as this just continues to blow up to the upside, we either have to think that now it's different to think that Bitcoin won't just continue to go down. So the dollar just keeps marching up. We'd have to say that this time is now different, that Bitcoin would decouple from it or something else has to give. And so my thought is that Bitcoin being the much smaller market is probably more likely to fall victim to broader trends than, you know, it just being able to suddenly magically decouple. We'll see, you know, time will tell. And it's, you know, it's certainly not impossible that we'll see this kind of, um, you know, leading indicator kind of behavior end up being the case if we do see more bullish movements. But certainly in this macro backdrop, you know, I'm not seeing any reason yet to just think, oh, that has to be the case that Bitcoin's, you know, decoupling. 
and we're going to rally. And one of the things I did want to talk about as well, so the other argument I've seen on kind of the bull case is that, oh, well, this is just max fear, right? This is max fear across the market, not just crypto, but across, you know, broader markets, stock market, you know, uh, the FX markets, the, the bond markets, et cetera. And so that means that we have to be at the bottom, right? Because you, you know, there's that rule of thumb, you buy fear, you sell greed. You know, maybe that could be true, right? That absolutely could be true. But one of the things that you have to remember with that kind of line of thinking is that people have been saying that all the way down, right? You know, we went and had this move back in January of this year down to around 33K. People said, all right, that's max fear. Time to buy fear. We're just going to go rallying from there. Didn't happen. When we collapsed down on Bitcoin to 25K, people said, all right, that was it. That was max fear. That was the capitulation. We're now going to set the bottom go up. And then, of course, we had another leg down. And then a lot of people are now saying that, you know, June was max fear or right now where we are is max fear and that we're going to go up from there. And so I just wanted to point that out because, you know, in kind of recent history, especially in this broader bull market that the stock market has been in really ever since um, uh, 2008 back here, where it's just always been this kind of buy the dip mentality that's always ended up working out. You know, we were in a different macro environment throughout that whole time. It was not you know, we weren't seeing the record inflation like we're seeing now. We weren't seeing the Fed tightening into all these leading indicators of a pretty uh, nasty possible recession. You know, we just, we just have to remember that those some of those things that have worked for the last decade might not necessarily work anymore. So I'm not necessarily saying that it is, it is the case that, you know, we're just going to have to go back down to the downside. But I just want to call out that kind of thinking because I see that a lot on crypto Twitter, especially saying that, you know, if everyone's fearful, that must mean we're at the bottom. You know, people have been saying that all the way down here and it hasn't come true yet. So there's just one caveat with that. Now, again, this could age horribly. This could be the bottom. We could go ripping from here for all I know into October. Absolutely possible. But there's some other things that I'm going to look for first before I make that my base case to think that another leg down isn't possible or isn't likely. So let's get into that as well here. So I want to show some models here at the channel. That's another kind of pieces of data that feed into my bearish outlook that are separate from the macro outlook. Because I think at this point, in some ways people are tired of talking and hearing about macro because it's all that anyone ever talks about. But let's look at just things that are just internal to Bitcoin that also make me think that caution might be warranted here. So this is the market direction classifier, the MDC. This is our uh, a trend indicator that we have here on the channel. What it does is it assesses the assets price action and creates this critical level above which is bullish, below which is, is bearish. I'm zooming in just so we can see it a little bit better here. But you can look at past videos. I have, you know, the full history for Bitcoin. You know, it does a good job of identifying these really nasty moves before they happen or right at the genesis of when they happen often. And you'll notice that we're sitting below it right now. You know, we kind of fell down below it and we're currently quite a bit below it now. So, you know, the critical level right now as I as I make this video is about 21.4K, 21.5K, somewhere in that ballpark. So we're still sitting notably below that, you know, down in the 19Ks as I record this right now. And so, you know, it doesn't necessarily mean we have to do this because, you know, there are times where we've fallen into the red and we haven't just fully on crashed. But certainly in this bear market, it has not generally been a good sign to fall below it because we can see what's happened twice now when we fall below it, end up going, setting in a new leg down. So again, it's not destined that that's going to happen again. But until we reclaim this critical level, my outlook remains bearish because generally speaking, Bullish things can't really happen, or at least big bullish moves can't happen until you're above the MDC level. We're currently below it. So even if I miss out at 19K and I would be getting in at 21.5K, I don't really care all that much because I'd much rather limit my downside risk and stay out while below the MDC and then maybe think about taking on more risk when we're above it. Currently below it, so I remain in a bearish outlook from that perspective. Again, not financial advice. You should be making your own decisions about how to navigate this, but that's what I'm one of the things that I'm looking at. We're bearish on the MDC, so the data is telling me a bearish outlook is reasonable and it has been quite prescient of that in the past as well. So another indicator that's also giving me concern is the momentum bias indicator, MBI. So if you're not familiar with this model, it captures momentum in the market and specifically this idea of momentum bias when momentum is kind of biased to the upside, which will drag pull price up along with it, or when it's, um, bias to the downside, where it'll kind of pull price down as well. And so you can see that in bear markets, it's kind of a very distinctive pattern tends to play out where you'll kind of move down, try to poke your head up, back up above zero. 
in a relief rally to try to reestablish positive momentum bias, but then just get rejected to the downside and down to the deep red. And you see that that happened here. You know, we tried to reestablish positive momentum bias back in March of this year, poked our head above zero, and then just got rejected down to the downside and just went, you know, falling off a cliff basically to where we are right now. And notably in this other, you know, more recent kind of relief rally we tried to stage, we didn't even make it all the way up to zero before we getting rejected down. Actually very similar to what we saw play out back here going into 2015, you know, getting rejected before we even making it to zero. And then of course what happened back then was we actually had that final capitulation to the bottom that played out right here. So I'm not necessarily, I'm not prognosticating and saying that the bottom now has to come, that you know, this big capitulation necessarily has to follow all alongside. But certainly when you're looking at the MBI, you'd much rather be in the green than in the red. And we just haven't shown the ability to, let alone get above of, uh, zero, to stay above zero with Bitcoin whatsoever. So this gives me some concern. And really until we start reestablishing a positive momentum bias, I don't see a whole lot of reason to flip my bias um, just yet. Cause you know, really you have to start being able to spend some time in the green before these big moves are possible. We just haven't seen that yet. And what I'd really like to see is this kind of oscillation around zero behavior that I've talked about in the past, where you can kind of get up and just start kind of oscillating around the middle and then building into a regime of spending a lot more time in the green and the red. That would be a bullish indication. We're not anywhere close to that right now. So that also gives me some worry. So kind of overall, my thoughts with um, Bitcoin and crypto is that, you know, the talk about decoupling, I see is just unlikely. I don't really see any reason why now magically Bitcoin will just fully decorrelate from everything else that's going on where it hasn't for the last, you know, ever since it's the all time high back in November, it's just been going down only with the rest of the markets. Why would that suddenly be different now? Again, the one possibility for the uh, kind of more bullish case, as I mentioned before, was this idea of Bitcoin maybe acting as a leading indicator. But, you know, again, that's that's something that's, you know, yet to be seen. I think, you know, I'm not going to be betting the farm on that necessarily happening. And so do I think Bitcoin's going to fall off a cliff? You know, I don't know, but I think it will if the broader markets continue to fall off a cliff as well. You know, if we go into the next week, you know, with the S&P 500, you know, gapping back down and just decisively taking out the lows from June, I still think it'd be quite hard for Bitcoin to still chill out at around 1918K like it did, you know, just now when the stock market was falling. I think it's probably more likely it has to go find a new low also. And especially if we see things like the dollar continue to kind of go parabolic, uh, bond market continue to be sold off, you know, other currencies continue to bleed against the dollar. You know, it's all just such a, a nasty kind of concoction. It just seems unlikely to me that Bitcoin can just defy all that gravity and kind of hang out on its own. Could happen though, right? And so that's that's the thing is that if we do end up showing some strength here, if we can flip the MDC green, if we can start showing strength on the uh, MBI, especially stay above zero on the MBI, then, you know, the possibility of this having been the bottom back here in June becomes a heck of a lot more likely in my view. I think we're too early for that. And so really the question becomes, you know, is it worth trying to take the bet now that this is the bottom at here at around, you know, 19K. Um, and then, you know, assuming that price will never get back down here, or is it better to just wait for a little bit higher when you have more confidence in it? You know, obviously I'm not gonna give advice, you should make up your own decisions. But, you know, when I'm thinking about it, I, I've talked about this before, I'm not trying to time the absolute bottom. Some ways I don't really care when the absolute bottom is. More what I care about is just knowing as early as I can when the, the change is likely to happen when this change in trend is likely to be there. And the data just aren't pointing to that yet. They're just not giving clear enough signs yet that there is some kind of trend reversal that's imminent. So that is why I'm maintaining my more bearish outlook. But again, not financial advice to make your own decisions. All right, if you like the content, remember to subscribe to the channel, give the video a like and follow us on Twitter. A lot of updates, our indicators, and more over there.